the leaves. There's nobody stopping us but ourselves. So yeah, so going back to that, it says the, the people that are you know basically standing up, showing themselves that maybe their own personal uh, likes and dislikes and how they are and who they are, and they're putting themselves out there, as they say, are the ones that are thriving and actually succeeding in the new world that we live in. Um, and obviously nowadays with the with the whole uh, virus going on, it's a lot of fear. So that fear, obviously fear of health is there, but our fear to be successful, he says the fear of succeeding is bigger than the fear of failing. And all creators are there. Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back, welcome back. I am so excited to share a quick insight um, that I've picked up last night. Uh, I was reading my, finishing up my book. I, I strongly recommend you pick up this book. If you haven't read it yet, it is an awesome book, Lynchpin by uh, Seth Golden. Um, and here, I was so kind of blown away by this. I mean, I've read it in a lot of the books. I've heard about it. Never really thought about it in that way, but... He basically describes how we have two parts of the brain and how most of us are right now living on one part of that brain. And he calls the two parts of the brains are, there's obviously there's an there's a, a actual medical term for it, but I don't want to go into that because my pronunciation sucks. <laughs> but if you want to Google it, you can. Um, so one part of he calls is the lizard brain, which is the, the brain where obviously, you know, keeps us doing the normal mundane things, living our lives, being safe, uh, and, and being part of society at, you know, a great citizen and paying our taxes and doing what we do on a daily basis. And then there's another part of the brain, which is obviously the genius part, the creative part, which we all have, which he states that that's where most of us are, you know, supposed to be. Like, where is our normalcy to be in life? What we all actually, you know, had while we were growing up, we still have, but we have to be able to tap into that. But um, obviously, consciously, uh, he says this is the part where we have when we're little kids, right? We were always imagining things. We were always, um, you know, had imagination, right? If you think about it, when I have my daughters and, and they'll, you know, one of them takes a doll and says that the doll's real. And she says she's playing in a castle or she's doing something that, to me, it baffles me because it has no type of relevancy. But for her, she's in this different world, a different, uh, obviously, land of make-believe, as they call it, right? And as adults, we kind of... Well, not kind of, we lose that because of, you know, as we call it, the real world, reality, uh, duties, whatever it is that we kind of associate with that. And he gives examples of that as well. So I just want to share real quick, also a real quick video, if you guys get a chance, um, go on YouTube and look up uh, the TED Talk by um, the author of Eat, Love and Pray, I think is the, the title of the book. I forgot, the last name is Gilbert. Um, I wish I would have prepared better. Um, let see if I remember. Uh, Alright, so I forgot the name, the exact name of the the lady, but um, she's the author of... Um, let me Give me one second. Let me see if I can find it for you. Um, All right, so I'm not going to look for it now, but um, I'm not going to bore you guys with that. But, yes, go ahead on YouTube and look up. Um, just put up, I'm pretty sure it comes up, Last Name Gilbert and TED Talk. And it's about a, like a five, six-minute small short uh, video TED Talk. And it is very powerful for all of the creators out there now that are trying to create, that are creators, that are content creators, art makers, music music uh, producers, music makers, whatever, whoever it is in the, in the art industry of creation. I think all of us are. It's a great video because it gives you insight on what you actually explains here. You know, it's it's on, you know, sometimes our fear might not be of, you know, obviously we all have a fear of failing, right? We we have a fear of being looked at, being judged, 
being exposed, whatever it may be. Um, I mean, like anybody can go on online right now and see all my videos and whatever it is I talk about, my nonsense, whatever they look at it, but I choose not to let that get to me. So you have to make a conscious choice whether you're ready for that or you just want to stay and hide. And he states, this economy that we live in right now, those of us that are are in fear of exposing our beliefs, exposing what we who we are, kind of putting ourselves out there, as they say, is leaving us behind. Um, the ones that are, are thriving and are actually um, living their true selves and, and obviously exciting and content lives are those that are being themselves, standing up for what they believe in, whether it is not right to others or wrong to others, whether it's radical, whether it's not, they stand to what they believe in. Again, our beliefs, I want to make a, a real quick note, our beliefs and our um, um, whatever maybe morals can change in time. Like what I say now, what I believe now might change in a year. Um, being open-minded to that, we're always evolving. So if, if I make a claim that I believe this is the only way and in one year I change it, there's nothing wrong with that. There's, that's just human nature in us. We can change. Anybody can change. We are the ones accountable for that, but we don't have to stick through. You know, I think a lot of us are scared of that. If I go and make a video about a certain topic, I can't come back and be like, hey, I didn't believe in that. Yes, you can. You have every right to change your beliefs. There's nobody stopping us but ourselves. So, yeah, so going back to that, it says the, the people that are, you know, basically standing up, showing themselves that maybe their own personal uh, likes and dislikes and how they are and who they are, and they're putting themselves out there, as they say, are the ones that are thriving and actually succeeding in the new world that we live in. Um, and obviously, nowadays with the, with the whole uh, virus going on, there's a lot of fear. So that fear, obviously, fear of health is there, but our fear to be successful he says the fear of succeeding is bigger than the fear of failing and all creators out there you can agree with me or not i know sometimes at night <laughs> um uh, these thoughts come up of man what if i succeed at this what if i have to now um, uphold my 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 i would say my image or whatever it is that i have, I have portrayed and it's scary. You, get my blood uh, rushes, my blood pressure goes up, my heart rate increases, right? And these are things that's just thoughts going on in my mind about what if I succeed. So it is normal. I think it is something that we do have. I think all of us have it. I think um, it's something we kind of take for granted, but a lot of us are scared to succeed. So hopefully you're not letting that get to you. But in real quick, he says, um, there's a paradox to the safety. Uh, zone like basically all, all those jobs that that we grew up as you know union pension jobs safe safe jobs I go to a gym not too far from here and there's a lot of older retired individuals maybe late 40s early 50s and they there that's they're that's what they did um now they retire they, they go to the gym they take care of themselves but that's what was when they were you know um you know basically when they were going up growing up or when they were living their lives back in the 70s and the 80s that was what you did you went to a good corporation a good job factory whatever it may be uh maybe a city employee a city servant whatever it may be and you served your time you left and you got your pension for the rest of your life and i think a lot of times a lot of us sell ourselves short because although it's great benefits it's a great career you're selling what you're truly are here to do. You might be in that position, but you might not really be here for that. And I strongly believe that when you're able to align with these, uh, you know, your fulfillment and what you're here to do, there's no need for you to be um, anything else than kind, anything else than 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 positive, than thriving, because you're aligned with all these uh, principles that you're here to do. When you're not aligned with that, you're normally going to have depression, um, anger, anxiety, a lot of these things that we all suffer from because you're not aligned with, you're this, with there's a misplacement in one of the, I would say in a puzzle. If your puzzle is not aligned right, your mind is not aligned right. So, and if you guys are questioning that, there's a lot of books talking about that. So if you don't believe me, there's a lot of books on that topic. So real quick on the paradox of safety. He says the resistance, which he calls the lizard brain, which is the brain that keeps us safe. He says, um, would love for you to curl in the corner, avoid all threats, take no risk, 
and hide. And it does feel safe after all, right? But the paradox to that is if that it, it, the more that you the sorry, the more that you hide, the riskier it is. The less commotion you cause, the most likely you are to fail and to be ignored, to expose yourself to failure. We try to set up an economy where you can hide the big, your big ideas, go through the motions, and get what you needed. That's not working so well now. So the new economy is, you know, I want you to think about it, to really contemplate. You know, the new economy is exposing ourselves, whether we like it or not. We might not like who we are, and that gives us more awareness, more consciousness. Maybe we have to change certain things, but exposing ourselves and being true to ourselves, whether it takes criticism, whether it brings back negative feedback, whatever it is, it's holding ourselves accountable and knowing that that is who we are. And that is the only way I think right now we're able to thrive in this economy because I know a lot of individuals that have so much talent, so much uh, personality, creativity, and the number one thing holding them back is the fear of being out there, of being recognized, of succeeding. It is not the fear of being kind of, yeah, it's kind of being judged, but it's mostly the fear of what it is to see. They have to change their life. They have to make a whole big change. They have to leave their old uh, beliefs, to leave their old life, whatever it may be they had in the past. So if you're having this, if you're having this indecision, if you're feeling that way, it might be time for you to start little by little creeping into who you are, letting letting the world know who you are, what your likes, what your, what your just your dislikes, and just being yourself truly. Um, and... Again, if you're happy with what you're doing, I think that's great. But if you have some type of situation where I know why I didn't like my job, I felt like it was just the system was kind of kind of weird where you just were forced to go somewhere you didn't like to go to and just to get up some money to buy stuff you really didn't care for to then go back to that thing. So I felt like the system was kind of weird, which led me to open this channel, start reading, really looking, look, looking into some ideologies, different beliefs, and where we can change our true selves and um i don't know i think personally i think a lot of us have this and we kind of afraid to admit it and um it's afraid to talk about it i think a lot of us are afraid to talk about the actual fear we have um and it shows the vulnerability shows the weakness and that is where we need to start so um let me know what you guys think in the comments and i'll see you guys tomorrow peace